And fifth, the left fielder Troy Leneve. Betting sixth, the second baseman Jaden Davis. Betting seventh, the right fielder Matthew Polk. Betting eighth, the center fielder Calvin Hewitt. And batting ninth, the shortstop Jonathan Vastai. RJ Austin was one for three with a walk and a run scored in game one of the series. 375 overall. A couple of homers and 26 runs batted in. Leadoff hitter leads his team and runs batted in. There's a strike from Eskew. Austin, a couple of home runs, hit his second of the season last Saturday. That was against Auburn. Sends this out to center. Brewer retires RJ Austin, one down. In the field, game two of this series, four seconds. So here's Davis Diaz. Diaz was 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored in game one. He's a junior from California. 275, one home run and 13 driven in. Grounded foul. Opponents only hitting 186 this season against Eskew. Did suffer the loss last week at Ole Miss. Call strike three. Diaz down looking, two away. Eskew had three strikeouts in the start at Ole Miss last weekend. Only one walk, 68 pitches, four and a third. Give up four runs, he was victimized by three homers. Tough day to hit home runs at Founders Park this afternoon. Flags blowing straight in from center. Vanderbilt did have one though, off the bat of Matthew Polk. Yeah, today's a different day. I mean, normally this is a ballpark, especially in the daytime that the ball flies. We usually see the wind blowing, usually kind of out to right center, just dead uh, straight away. And uh, today it's blowing in. and. It's a day you definitely want to throw strikes and make them put it in play. And it's tough to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Two and one the count on the number three hitter, Alan Espinal. And he went. This is Mayhew Edwards over at first. Hank Himenen is our home plate umpire. Edwards is at first. Damian Beals at second. And Jeff Head is at third. Two and two the count on Espinal. The SEC player of the week. Fly ball short center. Parker Nolan was one for five. A couple of runs scored. The series opener. Extended his hitting streak to nine games. Facing his former teammate in Bryce Cunningham. One on one to count. Cunningham, opponents are hitting 196 against him. That's the exact same average against that Colton, excuse me, that Carter Holton had coming into the series. Two and one. After a pair of no decisions to start the year, he's won three straight, including a win last Saturday against Auburn. And at five innings, four hits, three runs, but only one of them were earned. Three walks and five strikeouts and 90 pitches for the win against the Tigers. And the count is run full on Parker Noland. Two sixty-six hitter at the plate for the Gamecocks. Fights that one off. After 
four years at Vanderbilt. You know, Nolan looking forward to this series. Cunningham strikes out Nolan. One down here in the bottom of the first. Talk about two durable catchers, outstanding hitters, Messina and Espinal, starting both ends of this doubleheader for their respective teams behind the plate. Yeah, and not only that, how many times do you see both catchers in a lineup batting in the top three in the order? It's a little bit rare, but two extremely good athletes and very, very good hitters. Colt Messina obviously rated the number one catcher in all of college baseball. South Carolina's got to get ready to hit this fastball. It's 95-96, and Cunningham is really coming right after these Gamecock hitters. It's fouled back. Messina was one for three. RBI and a run score, walked a couple of times in game one. Coming off that huge four hit night on Tuesday against Upstate. Two and two the count on Messina. Full count. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cunningham. And both of those pitches on, on strike three were where Cunningham expanded the strike zone a little bit. South Carolina going to have to make sure Cunningham brings it down. It's tough when you're facing a guy in mid-90s, obviously, but you, you, you don't want to chase pitches up in the strike zone. Ball one to Kennedy Jones. Jones was one for three with a walk, a run scored, RBI as well in game one. One and one the count. Super move for someone in the front row. Lays off two and one the count on Kennedy Jones. Remember, Carter Holton struck out the side in the bottom of the first. Eventually, Kim Cox, after seeing him, able to get to him in the third. It's another full count. Cunningham strikes out the side here in the bottom of the first. Yep. Yeah, Coach Corbin has a special place in my heart. He started recruiting me probably my 10th grade year. Uh, he was at Clemson at the time under Jack Leggett, and uh, he's just an awesome recruiter. and. That surprised me. He's done extremely well at Vanderbilt. Really happy for him. Jack Bolger at the plate for the Commodores. Bolger did not start game one for Coach Corbin, but he entered as a pinch hitter. Two for two with an RBI. Bowie, Maryland. His 10th start of the season. Yes, I do. The count has run full. Bolter thought he had ball four. He was hitting really well in February before his injury. To miss a couple of weeks. 
charging is LeCroy. Unable to get the handle. And Bulger will reach. Remember, Bulger is dealing with a hamstring. Yeah, LaCroix did a good job there. It was just on the exchange. Tried to be a little bit too quick there, but I think Bulger yeah, I think he may, may have re-injured re himself. I know yeah. it. That's a tough one, too, to get out of the box well, and he's, he's trying to stay in. You can see him talking to the trainer. He doesn't want to get, come out, but it looks like he is. That's a shame. He had been dealing with that hamstring issue between February 25th and March 15th. Missed a bunch of games. Came back last weekend against Auburn. Unfortunate for Vanderbilt. The cleanup hitter has to exit. Kojo takes over for Bulger. Kojo got the start at DH in game one and was replaced by Bulger as a pinch hitter. Down the third base line, Laniv sends that to the corner. Kojal rounds third. It's an RBI double for Troy Laniv and Vanderbilt strikes first, they lead one nothing. And that sinker there just up a little bit. On the inner half of the plate, great job of hitting there by Laniv, keeping his hands inside the ball and driving it the other way. Nothing LaCroix could do there. That ball is just right down the third base line. And here's where the Gamecocks and SQ have got to do a good job of just trying to minimize the damage here. Throw strikes, try to get three outs. Even if that second run scores here, you don't want to give up a huge inning. Jaden Davis was one for four with a ribby in game one. Sophomore from Cookville, Tennessee. This is his first season with Vanderbilt. Spends his freshman season last year in the SOCON at Samford. Was the SOCON freshman of the year and a first team all SOCON selection. Collegiate baseball freshman all American. Back to Eskew. One down. Laniv advances to third. The wind's been blowing in all day, but that didn't stop Matthew Polk homering to left field. That was in the eighth inning of game one. Home run hit either side. RBI opportunity here, runner at second, one down. Ground ball to short with the infield in. Tip it. Tires Polk. And you have to wonder there if Polk didn't peek up and realize that the infield was playing in because that was definitely a, a sinker down in the zone, a pitch that Eskew, you know the scouting report going into facing Eskew, Dave, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure if he that caught him by surprise there, but good call there by Mark Kingston having the infield in with Eskew pitching, getting that ground ball. Worked out for South Carolina. Here's Hewitt. And I say the element of surprise because a lot of times you'll see managers, especially early in the game, maybe staying back, having the infield play back there and, and, and surrendering that run and just trading it for an out. But I like the aggressive call there from Mark Kingston. Hewitt gets hit. We'll take first the two down. He would 
brings a lot of speed to first base. 14 of 15 he's stolen so far this season. Runners at the corners, two down. There goes Hewitt. Sliced foul off the bat of Vastine. Vanderbilt team that loves to run. Coming into this series, 53 of 58. It's over 90% stolen base success rate. Oh and to the count on Vastine. Junior from Florida goes 0 for 4 in game one. Tip it. Retires Vastine. Ball. Get an easy out there. Keep that runner from scoring. That was a great inning there by Eskew. Giving up a double that, that scored a run and he's at second base with no outs and, and keeping him there was huge. One and one the count on Ethan Petri. Petri walked three times in game one. One of them with the bases loaded for an RBI. Also scored a run. Drills that deep to left. Laneve looks up. Goodbye. A home run for Ethan Petri. His team leading ninth home run of the season. And we're tied at one. Thought we ha he had one hip in game one. He gets one in game two. Yeah. Well, look at the balance there from Petri, and you're right. I mean, we did thought we had one in game one, but that one, that one was pulled a little bit to left center, and that ball's <laughs> some juice on that one as well. Really surprised he threw the fastball. He threw him breaking balls, threw him the whole at bat, and. If you throw the fastball there, you gotta throw it up out of the zone, but Petri was able to catch up the 96 and interesting to see what that was off the bat of Petri. That ball was hammered. Lee Troy was one for four in game one and an RBI single in the seventh that scored Ethan Petri. Tune to the count on Lee Croy. Fourth strikeout for Bryce Cunningham. Yeah, all four outs recorded by Cunningham via the strikeout. I mentioned the five strikeouts he had last Saturday against Auburn in the win. But a season high was the week before against Illinois State. Eight innings, just one earned run, no walks, and 11 strikeouts. 118 pitches for the win. Hey, Rick, Rick, Rick. Someone who can go deep in a game, Kip, and rack up strikeouts. Tyler Causey at the plate. Looks like we're gonna have a platoon situation at first base with Kazi playing against right-handed pitching and Casas against left-handed pitching despite the fact that he's a left-handed hitter. The splits just seem to favor that situation. Yeah, and that's tough. I mean, that's tough for anybody to get into a groove. Um, you know, I think Mark Kingston would probably like to see one of them 
take that spot over. That's another strikeout. He threw four straight changeups to Causey there. Good changeup coming in about 88, 89. Only about six or seven miles an hour off his fastball, but looks just like his fastball coming out of his hand. Good pitch from Cunningham. First pitch fouled off by Blake Jackson. Jackson was 0 for 4 in game one. Junior from Coppell, Texas. Ground ball to third, Diaz. Retires Jackson to end the second, but the game. RJ Austin had one of them in game one. He's 0 for 1 so far in this one. Flew out to center field his first time up. He's one down, but it's going to roll foul. And Bulger went down earlier in the season and moved him into the leadoff spot. He's been a good fit for it, and defensively switching from center field to first base with Maldonado out for the season. Still learning the position at first. Didn't play a lot there this fall. Doing a great season at the plate. to the count on R.J. Austin. Coach Corbin calls him a throwback. He plays the game with a great deal of passion, determination, and grit. run full on Austin. The sophomore from Atlanta coming off a freshman season where he hit 257, seven homers and 43 ribbies. He's the MVP of the SEC tournament. Ninth pitch of the at bat. It's knocked down by LeCroy. The long throw. Got him. Oh, what a play made by Talmadge LeCroy to get the speedy Austin. One down. You see the athleticism there. And what I love here is the one hot throw. Got to make a long throw like that. Sometimes guys try to hear it out, but good job there by LaCroix, especially given an easy one hop there. Not Nothing in between there for the first baseman to scoop. Oh my. And Messina's got to catch that, but that still should have been a strike. I guarantee if he catches it, though, it's a strike. He's certainly frustrated there. He cost his pitcher a strike there. I'm Jeff. He's a. One and one the count now on Davis Diaz, who struck out his first time up. We got it, Turf! 275 hitter, one home run, and 13 runs batted in. Home run was March 5th against Eastern Michigan. Lee Croy charges. How about the pick? At first by Kazi. Yeah, another good play by LaCroix and Kazi making it look easy over there. With a nice scoop at first base. It was a good job by Eskew recognizing Diaz's swing there on the pitch before. He just didn't make a good swing on that sinking fastball and 
went right back to it. That turbo sinker just gets him, hit the top part of the ball and beat it down in the ground. Shift is on for Espinal. That's been off the center field his first time up. Nine multi hit games already this season for Espinal, including each of the four coming into this series. Hold them in check in game one. Such an improved hitter. I'm sure the last season numbers there were accurate, but this season, just outstanding, 373. Look out. Espinal gets hit. Second hit batter for Dylan Eskew. So two out base runner. Camden Kojal. There goes the runner, the throw from Messina. Not in time. Stolen base for Espinal. I'll tell you, if you're scouting Messina, that's really all you need to see. I mean, that was a perfect throw on a very difficult pitch. You know, Espinal got a great jump there. The fact that that was that close is, is truly remarkable. It's a great throw from Messina. last season for South Carolina. I think knowing how much a team runs like Vanderbilt, it's got to be pretty exciting from Cena knowing this series is going to certainly have the opportunity to show off that arm. Yeah, as long as his pitchers do a good job of holding runners on, he's, uh, yeah, he, he wants them to go, but that one there was just a really good jump. I think he he just felt like he could steal that one on Eskew. Eskew's not the quickest to the plate. As you see now, Comasina coming out to talk to Eskew. He's up to 50. Line drive over the head of a leaping tippet. Espinal rounds third, and he will score. An RBI single for Camden Kojal. Vandy takes a two to one lead. Ball just out over the plate. Good piece of hit. And Eskew is in a hitter's count, unfortunately. 3 1 count. Almost looked as if he kind of gave in right there with first base open. I was a little surprised he didn't try to go fastball in on him or, or something. Don't, don't give him anything just to put his bat out and get an easy hit there for get the 2 1 lead for Vanderbilt now. Kojal at first, not stolen the base this season. Troy Leneve at the plate. He had an RBI double his first time up. That was in the second. 306 hitter. Three homers and 24 runs batted in. That one misses. Cena, I think, wanted that one, Kip. Yeah, I think he did too, and I, know, I, I thought it was a strike as well, but. It's a 
tough sky right now, Gamecock. Fielders need to point out the ball here. Three and one, now the count on Leneve. Looks a little bit brighter on that screen than it does yeah. in uh, looking at it in real time here. Late afternoon clouds. Yeah, I know as a golf fan, you know, you watch sometimes and you see how you can still see a little bit, but a lot of times those guys are complaining. They're playing and they can't even see the, to be able to read the greens on the putts when they're playing so late. It's a two out walk for Leneve. Yeah, and this all started with a hit batter with two outs. You know, you look at that and just for South Carolina. First and second, two down. Here's Jaden Davis. Fell back. Davis grounded out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. 333 hitter, one home run, and 21 runs batted in. Started 58 games for Samford last season as a freshman. Hit 358. Nine homers. 38 runs batted in at a 452 on base percentage. And a 37 game hitting streak from mid March through late May for the Sanford Bulldogs. It's the Sanford NCAA basketball game. Boy, did they get robbed. Yeah, they did. Two and one the count on Jaden Davis. Two and two. Bozier leads off second, Leneve off first. Askew strikes out Davis. And Vanderbilt will leave two on here in the top. Of I think it's, um, you know, it's just, again, for me, a really key ingredient to this team this year is, is, you know, Mark Kingston talked about it early on in the year. He's just a guy who's just, he, he can't not start. He's just, uh, he does so many things well. And uh, if he can hit like he's hitting, it's certainly a bonus because he's a very good defender. Had a tough series at Ole Miss. It was one for 13 with a ribby. He was red hot the first three weeks of the season. Eight multi-hit games. Absolutely dominated Belmont in that series. Vandy just played Belmont in the midweek. He was seven for nine against Belmont with a couple of walks. All three games were multi-hit games. Cunningham gets Brewer one down. Six strikeouts now for Bryce Cunningham. And he pulls the string on him here. It goes change up. That's a good pitch. I tell you, when you got to face 95, 96, and they can come back and do that, and you know, he's showing command of three pitches, fastball, slider, change up. Cunningham looking really strong. One another count on Will Tippett, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. One and one. Tippett was one for four in game one, scored a run. Average at 188, home run and 15 driven in. Tippett stole his 10th base of the season in game one. Three and one the count on the Gamecocks shortstop. Fouls that off. Or 
Kingston called Will Tippett their most improved player this fall. Grounded to third, Diaz. Two away. Six strikeouts and two ground ball outs for Bryce Cunningham. The only fly ball that left the yard off the bat of Petri. Here's Parker Nolan. Nolan struck out his first time up. Drifting foul and out of play. Coach Corbin loved having Parker Nolan for four years. He's a reliable player, always was out there. Happy he's still able to play in the SEC, just not excited to have to face him this weekend. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting comment. You know, it's like, well, it's only three games, which is a, you know, as we know, Coach Corbin's certainly a positive person and just an amazing person to be around. And uh, he was, you could tell in his voice, he was genuinely happy for Parker Nolan that he was able to continue his career and, and be a starter here at South Carolina. Hit 269 in his four years at Vanderbilt, 22 homers for the Commodores, 119 runs batted in. Played all over the field. Diaz gonna be a tough play. Got him. Davis Diaz gets Parker Nolan. South Carolina has one more challenge remaining. Got him by a half step. Nice play made by the Vanderbilt third baseman, Diaz. Now we'll head to the top of the fourth. Mandy leads out to see him establish himself as a Saturday or Sunday starter for South Carolina before the season's out. The opponents are hitting just 170 against Good. He last pitched on Tuesday against Upstate. Struggled a little bit, but was excellent last weekend at Ole Miss. Two and a third, one hit, no runs, no walks, and five strikeouts. And he has multiple strikeouts, Skip, in six of his eight appearances. Yeah, and I think, you know, good for me is a guy that, and you see there, he kind of did a little bit of a quick pitch. He, he, he changes his delivery time, if you will, even from the windup sometimes. He's kind of a throwback guy. I love watching this young man pitch. He is a true pitcher. Uh, he's not just up there trying to throw as hard as he can and, and beat you with just his stuff. He, he mixes and matches, and he has an ability to be able to, to make pitches and throw different pitches in different counts. There you see behind in the count, two and one. He throws the big overhand breaking ball. So for me, a guy like Ty Good is going to get better if he's a consistent. he has a consistent role. And I think that the best consistent role for him would be as a starter. Strikes out Polk. One down here in the top of the fourth. It's got him to chase. Yeah, he did. That was a good pitch. Looked like a, I couldn't tell if that was a slider or a changeup. Maybe that he cut a little bit, but either way, he certainly made a good pitch there with two strikes. Talk about his arsenal. He's also just a winner. In four years at College of Charleston, which is a program that's had plenty of success on the diamond, he's second all time in wins and third all time in strikeouts. Well, Dave, you said it, and uh, you're exactly right. For me, that that is the number one thing is there, there's something about knowing how to win games. You don't get all of those wins by your name if you're not a winner and you don't know how to pitch deep into games and be able to uh, just be a winner. And, um, you know, those are things sometimes that don't necessarily show up in the with a radar gun or the stat sheet all the time, but Ty Good is a winner. See, there was another quick leg kick there, quicker delivery, and he throws the breaking ball. I mean, it's just um, really fun to watch this young man pitch. Friday 
Friday night starter for College of Charleston. CAA Pitcher of the Year. Ground ball to third, Lee Croy on the backhand, fires. Not in time, Hewitt beats it out. Safe is the call made by Mayhew Edwards. Well, you talked about Hewitt getting down the line. He was flying, Dave. Yeah, he puts the pressure on the defense, for sure. I just don't think he's out. Uh, the only learning opportunity there for me would be for Causey really to, and it's tough on a ball that's coming in the dirt there, the one hopper, but I felt like he could have stretched out a little bit more. Field will be reversed to out. South Carolina retains their challenge. So Hewitt is out, 5-3. Two down here in the top of the fourth. The throw beat him, Kit. Yeah, definitely did. Two down, nobody on for the number nine hitter, Vastine. Deposits that into left. Two out single for Vastine. That will bring up RJ Austin. Austin's 0 for 2. He flew out to center field in the first. It was robbed by Talmadge Lecroy in the third. There goes Vastine, the throw from Messina. Not in time. Vastine safe at second. Another great throw from Messina. That's mm, close, Kip. That is close. I wouldn't think they'd overturn that, though. Looks like his hand may have just gotten in there. It's a two-out RBI opportunity for R.J. Austin with Vastine now at second. And that was a great read by Vastein. And that's one thing you got to know when you're facing Ty Good. He may spike that breaking ball and throw it in the dirt. And if you get a good read, as you can see there, even as good as Messina is back there, he blocked that ball, kept it right there close to him in front and fired a bullet to second. But was just anticipating that ball in the dirt. Great base running by Vastein. Take second on the wild pitch. R.J. Austin. He was two for 13 in the South Carolina series last year. Drove in a pair in the middle game. Count is run a full. That's pulled to left. Stein will score easily. An RBI double for Austin. Commodores take a three to one lead. Good went with the change up there and that one just caught way too much of the middle of the plate. Thought he may go back with the breaking ball. As you could tell, Austin really didn't want no part of it in that three one count, but Got something that looked like a fastball and did a good job of staying back and driving it into left field for a double. Ball one to Davis Diaz, who's 0 for 2. Struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. Speedy Austin leads off second. Wave. 
foul. Diaz, the player in the lineup kit, who Coach Corbin said is probably the most overlooked. We asked, you know, who doesn't get enough love on this team, and he said it's Diaz. Just a great player that's a little underappreciated. to the count on the number two hitter, Davis Diaz. Austin leads off second. There goes the runner, ground ball to short. Tip it, off balance. Retires Diaz. Vanderbilt gets one on the arc. Strike one, Nicole Messina. Cole struck out his first time up against Cunningham. Cunningham struck out the side in the bottom of the first. Now that big game against Upstate, Coach Kingston said both Messina and Petri look great. You saw what our offense looks like when you have two All-Americans playing like All-Americans. It just changes the whole complexion of our offense. He said we just need to continue to get them in a good place because when they are, everyone else seems to follow suit. Yeah, I mean, when you get those two guys producing at that level, it's uh, it certainly takes a lot of pressure off those other guys, and I think it frees them up a little bit more, Dave. And South Carolina can be a really tough lineup to face if they can get things together and, and you get those guys clicking on all cylinders and it certainly makes it tough on the opposition. Petri already has a home run, three and two the count on Messina. Paul, oh, strike three. Seven strikeouts for Bryce Cunningham. Looks just like a fastball out of his hand. That's a good power slider there from Cunningham. Cena knew it. His pitch count's only at 55 now here in the fourth inning. You need to try to get him out of there as soon as possible. I'd be looking to try to work the count and see if you can get as many 3-2 counts as possible and get that pitch count up because he, he looks really good. One on the count now on Kennedy Jones. Jones struck out his first time up. But you know, Dave, we talk about it uh, throughout the year. I mean, if, 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 as a pitcher, if you can still put up some of those ones when you give up something, it's not that big of a deal. It's still a three to one game, long ways to go, obviously, but South Carolina has pitched well, getting out of some innings that could have been a lot worse. When we spoke in game one about the success that South Carolina had against Carter Holton in his first two years. Hit Bryce Cunningham last season as well. It was a season I five innings last April against South Carolina. But he gave up six runs on six hits, four of them earned. He suffered the loss. He sur surrendered home runs, four of them. Messina twice, Petri and Braswell. Braswell, of course, no longer with South Carolina. He also had just one walk and seven strikeouts. So mixed results against the Gamecocks. You do have one home run against him so far. Petri in the second. Jones has three this season. Here's the 3-2. Fly ball, right field. Polk makes the play, two down. Well, this is what Ethan Petrie did in the second. Long ball left. Home run number nine on the season for Petrie. Gamecocks on the board. It's their only one. Yeah. I was hoping Cunningham would challenge him. He shook off to it too as well. He, his catcher gave him 
slider twice and he kept shaking and went back with fastball. Gave up a home run on the fastball here. You throw 96, hit it again, Petri. One and one the count on the sophomore from Land Lakes, Florida. Two and one. Now the count is run full. Petri walked three times in game one earlier this afternoon. And a walk again. Fourth walk of the series for Ethan Petri. This one with two down here in the bottom of the fourth. And yeah, that's what we talked about there. It's a great at bat from Petri. And even though there's two outs and the only runner on first, both all batters this inning have gone to three two counts, Dave. And they're running that pitch count up. He's got 68 now. There's another patient hitter in Talmadge Lecroy. Attacks the first pitch and hits it foul. Third on the team and walks behind Petri and Messina. In the hole, 0 2. Petri takes his lead. No chase. Home run on the season so far for Lee Crow. That was against Winthrop on February 20th. Four a season ago. We'll allow Petri to advance to second. Gamecocks have a runner in scoring position with two down. advances on the wild pitch to add RBI opportunity for Lee Croy. <laughs> to right center, Hewitt will chase it down towards the warning track here with the Gamecocks. And it's their turn to be the tail end of that video and next season's video. Yeah, they would love to see it. South Carolina, of course, back-to-back -back national championships in 2010, 2011, and reaching the championship series in 2012. That, of course, is under head coach Ray Tanner, now the athletic director at South Carolina, my former coach. It was awesome to see them win the national championship. Four pitch walk for Espinal. One of three retired numbers in the wall at Founders Park. The other one is, other two, I should say. Bass, number 13, and you were number 14, Kip. Yeah, that was quite an honor, obviously, last year. And you know, we mentioned Earl Bass, the former great, the late Earl Bass, pitched over at Airport High School. Another local Casey West Columbia guy. It was awesome to, to see his number get retired. I hope that they can continue that trend in the years to come because there are so many other names that uh, and players that, that deserve that honor. I was very fortunate to, to receive that honor last year. And, well, I tell you, just uh, the amount of teammates that, that 
former teammates of mine that came, Dave, and, and just uh, to be able to share it with them was very special. Obviously, my family being here, but, you know, it, my, my first thought was just all the, the former players that I had on my team that, you know, I think about it. I, I still challenge anyone to name better shortstops in a career that they had play behind them. I had, you know, Adam Everett my freshman year, Brian Roberts my sophomore year, and then Drew Meyer my junior and senior year. And, I mean, it was just – it was incredible. I mean, if a ball was hitting short anywhere near shortstop, it, that play was made. Three major leaguers. Yes, sir. Check on Espinal. Espinal stole a base in the third. Good strikes out Koja. One down here in the top of the fifth. Second strikeout for Ty Good. Here's Troy Leneve. He's been on base twice, an RBI double in the second. He walked in the third. Gonna check on Espinal. Now, Good just brings so much to the table. He's a great athlete. You can see he does a good job of holding runners close. And again, the experience, as you mentioned, Dave, um, obviously the fact that he is a, a winner and, and, and has won so many games, but but having that experience in pitching high level, high, you know, level innings and, and just uh, done a wonderful job in his career, wouldn't surprise me to see him in the rotation before the year's out for South Carolina. You mentioned the important innings. Coach Kingston said it as well. He said, you know, stuff gets real and gets important. He's someone who just finds another gear. Ultra confident guy on the mound. Grounded through the right side, a base hit for Laniv. Espinal all the way to third. Runners at the corners for the Commodores. Multi-hit game for Troy Laniv. Runners at the corners, one down. Jaden Davis due up. Davis is 0 for 2. He grounded out in the second, struck out in the third. Those at bats against Dylan Eskew. Davis coming over from Samford, led the Bulldogs to a SOCON championship. They played in the Auburn Regional with Auburn, Penn, and Southern Miss. That was a tough regional. Ultimately won by Southern Miss, but Samford took a game from them before getting knocked out with losses to Penn and in a rematch with Southern Miss. Tip it to second for one on a first. It's a double play. Six, four, three. And the Gamecocks are out of trouble in the top of the fifth. I think South Carolina has a good chance to win this game. You know, we talked to Coach Corbin earlier in the week about the bullpen, and it's, a, it's a, not necessarily something he feels great about. So uh, South Carolina, I do feel like, has a little bit bigger advantage with more depth in the bullpen than the Vanderbilt Commodores. You were asking about the bullpen pieces. He said it was kind of up in the air right now. It's ripped off the bat of Causey. That's a fair ball in the corner. Diving into second with a leadoff double here in the bottom of the fifth. Well, I can't believe he kept that ball fair. He just tomahawked that one. That was a ball. That was up in the strike zone. You know, I, I get the lefty-righty deal, but like I said, I really feel like that one of these guys, Casas or Causey, needs to try to get into a rhythm and get it rolling 
And, and you know, if I if I had to decide right now, I think it's Causey. Causey's uh, swinging the bat a good bit better than Costas for me right now. Causey's one for two. He's on second after his leadoff double. RBI opportunity for Blake Jackson. Two no the count on Jackson. He grounded out his first time up. That's when you got to be disciplined here. 2 0 count, one pitch, one spot. Hit the ball to the right side. That's a base hit for Jackson. Right center gap. Causey will score easily. An RBI double for Blake Jackson. And the game cocks are within one. in a great hitter's count there, and he gets that pitch out over the plate to be able to hook into the right center field corner. And boy, Jackson was rolling, watching them legs go up and down. He was flying. Takes outside. You know, I say that, but gosh, I'd, I'd let him swing it here. You know, he's, he's controlling, you know, the bat so well this year, hitting 333. It's a lefty, it's an easy one to hit a ground ball to the right side, advance him to third with less than two outs. Until you take a swing like that. <laughs> that was a good change up. He was just out in front of it, obviously a lot, and capped it, but I still think the right play is let him swing it here. One and one the count on Brewer, struck out his first time up. That was back in the third. That's knocked down by Diaz. Everyone is safe. Jackson advances to third. Brewer should be an infield single. He'll be on first. Another capper off a changeup. That's going to be a tough play there for Diaz, even if he fields it clean to be able to get Brewer. He runs really well. Still think you roll the dice here and swing it. It's a guy that, you know, Tippett is probably not going to get doubled up. A ground ball to the right side. Uh, I just I think I'd let him swing it here. Got a little bit of momentum going too. Don't give him an out. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Bones attempt is fouled back. You know, I just go back to, to the days on the mound, and I'm thinking, okay, first and third one, are no out, excuse me. I'm going, man, I, you know, I get a guy to cap a ball, and everything's fine in the hole right now. You're going to give me an out, I'll take it. It's a bit tied for the team lead in sacks this season, five of them. One and one. Yeah, and we didn't even mention it either. Brewer runs very well. You know, so does Tippett. Yeah, what's wrong with trying to, to steal right here? I would just either steal or I really and truly here, I would just let him play. I'd just let him swing it. Also have the speedy Jackson at third should they throw down. A lot of options right now for Coach Kingston. Yeah. Grounded to first. That's a foul ball. Tippett's hitting 185, one home run, 15 driven in. Does have a 372 on base percentage. And hit at Ole 
Miss last weekend. It was two-run double in the opener. The one-two. Two and two. Jackson leads off third, Brewer off first. Now the count is run full. You send Brewer here, Kip? Yeah, I do. Cunningham strikes out Tippett. Big strikeout for Bryce Cunningham. One down. And Tippett there stretches the zone there. That was ball four. So now a ground ball could get Cunningham out of further trouble. It could, and that's why I would have liked to have seen the steal there. I, I would definitely do it at some point in this at bat. Try to steal second base. Gotta go there. Yes. He really didn't get a good great a great read on that, but I didn't anticipate that ball in the dirt. And see now I feel like you're you're back in the same situation. If you, you made the pitcher throw a lot more pitches, he had to strike out tip it. Now it's second and third, one out. Now the South Carolina Gamecock hitters have got to do a good job of manufacturing a run here. Need to tie this up. One and one the count on Parker Noland. Parker's 0 for 2, struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. Two and one. And the Vanderbilt infielders playing back. The only one close enough may be the third baseman here. So if you're Parker Nolan, any ground ball to first, second, or shortstop scores a run. Three and one the count. First base is open. Cole Messina is on deck. Jackson leads off third, Brewer off second. Ground ball to the right side. That'll get the job done. Jackson scores, give Nolan an RBI, and we are tied. RBI opportunity for Cole Messina, a chance to give the Gamecocks the lead. It's ball one. Strikeout so far for Cole against Bryce Cunningham. Messina was definitely in swing mode there. Hitters count 2-0 and Cunningham throws the slider. Would definitely probably come back with a slider here if I'm Cunningham. Good hitters count for Cole Messina, three and one. Brewer on third, two down. High fly ball, left field. Leneve is back. This one is gone. A two run shot for Cole Messina. His ninth home run of the season. And the Gamecocks are on top. it just a little bit but he got just enough of it and the wind has died down a little bit Dave 
It's definitely not blowing as hard in as it was, and that one just gets out, but a big two-run blast for the Gamecocks. And I go back to not bunning, not giving that out away, I'm telling you it's really difficult to get three outs in an inning, and especially early in the game. I know we're in the middle of the game right now, but you got this pitcher, Cunningham. He's at the tail end. He's got 94 pitches, 95 now. Good, good decision by not bunting there, in my opinion. Can we go back to that quote from Mark Kingston about you're all Americans playing like all Americans? You got the home run from Petri, the home run from Messina. And a five to three lead. And he said when they play like that, everyone else, they'll follow suit. Yeah, they, they definitely fuel this team for sure. And it makes it very difficult for the opposition when they're rolling. Two and two the count on Kennedy Jones. It's pulled foul. Jones hitting 350, three homers and 15 runs batted in. is working here in the bottom of the fifth. 100 pitches. Strikes out Kennedy Jones. Traditional school with unbelievable baseball. He said, I would say this about South Carolina too, Kip. Unbelievable fan base. He said, just intense, whether it's football or basketball, doesn't really matter. They're just in love with their teams, which I admire, he said. It's a really tough place to play. There's a base hit for Polk. He said it's a tough place to play when you have to play the University of South Carolina. He mentioned in his post game on Tuesday, he said he felt like he was going into a hornet's nest this weekend. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's a team that's hungry. South Carolina, you know, losing a one run game at Ole Miss and was in a, another one run game late on Saturday and ended up losing that game and fought back and won on Sunday. So South Carolina a team definitely, I think they're a different team at home too. And that's one thing that South Carolina's, ooh. Almost turning two there. Yeah. It's one of those, as I was watching and I was kind of thinking Ty Good might, might let that ball drop and uh, try to get a double play the old fashioned way. It's one on one out for Vastine. Swings through 90 miles per hour. Stein's one for two. He grounded out in the second, singled, and scored a run in the fourth. Oh, and two. It's the third inning of work for Ty Good. Relief of Dylan Eskew. Did he go? No. This is Jeff Head. Wondering about Polk over at first. He's four for four and steals the season. Good, strikes out Vastine. Two down. Third strikeout for Ty Good. Yeah, the only surprising thing is it took two pitches to throw that for Good. After throwing the two fastballs up in the zone, I really thought he would have attacked Vastine, even in an 0-2 count with a curveball down. Looks as if Good, a guy that's 
got a lot of experience and you bring in a freshman here and a, a chance to win the series in this doubleheader. But Marlott's been good. He's been very good for South Carolina. Yeah, they like him a lot. Pounds the zone. Quickly ahead 0-2. And a lot of young pitchers performing well. Really holds well for the future and for right now. Austin just gets a piece. Austin's one for three and an RBI double in the fourth. One on first, two down. Pitch up high. Opponents hitting just 0.87 against Marlott this season. Scoreless inning against Upstate on Tuesday. Two innings scoreless on March 15th at Ole Miss. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Next headed foul and out of play. Seven strikeouts and seven and two thirds coming into this appearance. Looking for one here. Two and two the count on Austin. Now the count is run full. The shift is on for Austin. Cox on the left side. Holt, of course, will be off on the pitch. Out to left. Jones is there. And he makes the play to retire Austin. Vanderbilt will leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the season for Cyber. Petri attacks the first pitch and sends it deep to right. Petri has done it again. A multi-homer game for Petri. He gets his 10th home run of the season. Gamecocks lead six to three. Well, you know the professional scouts just love to see that. A guy that can obviously yank one out of here, but that ball's a hammer. He knew it, Tommy hit it. Great backspin there, just good balance. Mm. Another winless SEC team coming into today. Auburn was 0-5 facing Arkansas 5-0, and, and Auburn beats them 8-6 today. Was the quote from that video earlier? Anyone can beat anyone yeah. in the SEC? That's right. And that's why it was so important, too, after the first two losses at Ole Miss, just to get that win, salvage the series, pick up the win in the midweek, that momentum coming into this big series against the third ranked team in the country. Yeah, if you can avoid getting swept in the SEC, you know, that's huge. And obviously you want to try to win as many series as you can. Win those series at home and avoid getting swept on the road. That's huge. One and one the count. On Causey. That's headed to left center. His fourth of the season. Second home run of the inning for the Gamecocks. They lead 7 to 3.
pass it to. Good gracious. Let that ball travel, get deep in the zone, and it's a laser out the left center. Into the bullpen. Opposite field power from Tyler Causey. And now a visit for Vanderbilt. Jackson gets hit. Hopefully he's all right. Kingston out to check on Jackson. Yeah, it got him pretty square. You could tell he was obviously going to wear it. He was he was trying to stay in there and take it, but I think it got him right on the side of the knee. Now, if he steals on the very first pitch, this is going to go down as he might get an Oscar for it. Is that right? Is that, what, is that what those, that look those actors get? <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, he's got to go first pitch here, Dave. Jackson does have four steals on the season. Well, I don't know. It's in the running shape. We'll try it down the line. That's my point, okay. Dave. I mean, you got to think 5D here. Come on now. I mean, he's, this is all this is all a plan. I'm telling you. Gamecox, I get to steal on this one. Did have a couple of stolen bases. In the first game of this doubleheader. We were at the plate, he's one for two. Singled his last time up and scored a run. Brewer has some pop, a couple of home runs this season. Eight long balls for the Gamecocks last year. First one down, two and two the count on Brewer. It's going to reach the seats in foul territory. And a souvenir. Jackson takes his lead. Has run full. Brewer earlier in the season said in the post game, just focused on what I can do to help my team win a game this season. I don't have to be an All American because we have two of those. Just have to be the guy that's willing to do anything to win the game. He's doing that all year. 3 2. Foul back. Check on Jackson. Ball gets away from Austin, but not far enough. Jackson asking for interference, Kit? Yeah, I think so, but I don't know if that, I think he's down. We'll see if Jackson takes off. It's ball four. So Brewer works a walk. Jackson heads down to second. First and second, one down. 
will tip it to up. Again, this is a situation where we've seen Mark Kingston bunt sometimes with one out, first and second. I'm not bunting here. I'm not giving this, this Vanderbilt team an out. They're struggling to get them as it is. Don't give them one. Well, Tippett is 0 for 2 so far in this game. He grounded out in the third, struck out in the fifth. Good speed on the bases in Jackson and Brewer. You know, it goes back, uh, sorry, Dave, no, go it, it goes back to, you know, having a feel kind of what the game flow is. You know, some may say, oh, we got a, the number nine hole hitter, he's hitting 182, good time to bunt, but you're also up seven to three. Uh, in this situation in the game, just so many good things are happening for South Carolina when they're putting the ball in play. And Cyber's also been a little wild, hit by pitch and a walk. That's right. Two and two the count on Tippett. The count is run full. Hey, there it is. Called strike three. Big strikeout for Cyber. Two down. Good two seam fastball there from Cyber. Ran right over the outer outer corner there. It's a big second out for Cyber and the Vanderbilt Commodores. Well, here's the former Commodore and Parker Noland. Going to punish his former team. First and second, two down. An RBI ground out for Nolan his last time up. Takes a strike. No one in the hole, 0 and 2. Former Tennessee Mr. Baseball. Drafted out of high school. There go the runners. And the throw down a third gets away. Here comes Jackson. Out at home. Tag applied by Espino. And that'll do it for the Gamecocks. In Ball one from Marlott. Diaz is 0 for 3. Struck out in the first, grounded out in the third and the fourth. He's a 263 hitter last season with nine homers and 57 runs batted in. Really big improvement from his freshman season in 2022 when he hit 213. Here's another one drafted out of high school in the 12th round by the Diamondbacks of the 2021 MLB Draft. Two and two the count. There's lots of USA baseball experience. Does Diaz, as I mentioned earlier, the player in the lineup that Coach Corbin thinks isn't talked about enough. Foul ball. Which Corbin has mentioned about Diaz that he's why people get into coaching and stay in coaching. He has such a teachable spirit. Go, Peter, put him 
That to ball skills, some of the best on the team. Just a high level kid and a winning player. He said it's a lot of fun to coach Davis Diaz. Full count now. Marlott, underhand flip to Casas, who's now at first. <laughs> See Marlott laughing there. I think uh, a lot of his uh, teammates would give him a hard time there. That, that was one you normally don't underhand toss and run over there and do the scissors, but maybe he doesn't feel comfortable throwing to first and wants to underhand it, but perfect, perfectly executed there by Marlott. As long as you get it there, right, kid? That's right. See Casas over there at first base now for the Gamecocks. And he went. So Mayhew Edwards. We saw them make defensive changes late in game one in the outfield. Make one at first here at the top of the seventh. One and two the count on Espinal. Yeah. lot strikes out. The SEC Player of the Week, Alan Espinal, two down. That's tough catching up to that high fastball there. That's a strike, but he's been throwing the 12-6 breaking ball, and that combination that he has, as well as Ty Good, both with the high fastball and the 12-6 breaking ball, really tough against the opposition. Here's Kojal. Jack Bolger started this game in the DH spot for Vanderbilt. And reached on an error, but like he hurt his hamstring running down to first. He was taken out. He was in the top of the second, placed by Kojal. Some serious bite to it. Freshman versus freshman here. Marlott and Kojal. Kojal from Omaha, Nebraska. He's a first team All State football player there as well. He has USA baseball experience. Another 18 team. This is low and in. It's ball four. Two out walk for Kojal. Yeah, there's, we talk about learning opportunities there. Even in that one, two, two, two count, Marlott had got him on the breaking ball. He's made him swing at one that was spiked only about probably 57 feet in front of home plate. He had the opportunity there to go fastball just right down the middle up in the zone for chase pitch and, and went fastball down and then a 3-2 curveball with a 7-3 lead. This is, you know, to me, where you're challenging them. They hit a solo home run, they hit a solo home run. The last thing you want to do is walk, guys. Neve has been on base three times in this game, an RBI double in the second, walked in the third, singled in the fifth. And Cena. And trust my defense behind me. Three and oh the count on Laneve. It's 
all four. That one was close. Yeah, like it missed just a little bit in. So two on, two down, four run game. Jaden Davis do up. Davis is 0 for 3. Someone who can play a lot of positions, Coach Corbin. They don't get involved in the portal that often. They brought in Davis from Samford. Kozier leads off second, Leneve off first. The 0-2. Got him set up here. He can throw the 12-6 breaking ball for a ball down in the dirt. Try to get a chase here. I saw Messina there calling. I mean, it was, it was literally as if he was going to trying to throw the high curve ball for a strike. Side, Casas, no one at first, no play for Casas. And Vanderbilt has the bases loaded. And I love the energy he brings, but he had some antics out there that was just maybe a little bit too much. Really enjoying watching this young man since he gave up the walk-off home run against Clemson. I think that was a great learning opportunity for him. And he has just been tremendous since then. Opponents hitting just 103 against Ganey. Matthew Polk at the plate. Polk is one for three, singled his last time up in the sixth. He did homer in game one of this doubleheader, his fourth of the season. That was a solo shot. to the count on Polk. <laughs> Foul back. Junior from Long Beach, California. Four homers last season has already tied that number this season. Strikes out Polk, and Vanderbilt will leave the bases loaded here in the top of the seventh. During Ganey in the seventh there with the bases loaded, two outs. I got a piece of our home plate umpire. Parker Nolan at the plate. And he's 0 for 3 at an RBI ground out his last time up in the fifth. Fifth-year player from Knoxville, Tennessee, hitting 256. Showing a master's degree here in coaching education, South Carolina. of Bryce Cunningham. Three and two the count on Parker Nolan. And 
And it's a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the seventh. In the fifth, Cole Messina hit a two-run shot to left. His ninth home run of the season. Gamecocks had a big bottom of the seventh in game one earlier this afternoon. Put up five runs in that half inning. Messina had an RBI single. It was a big part of it. Scored a run. That pitch is inside. Marino. Cena has two multi-homer games already this season. One against Longwood and one against Belmont. Second against Belmont ended the game via the run rule. That's a four-pitch walk. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Cyber here in the bottom of the seventh. Two on, nobody out for Kennedy Jones in a mound visit for Vanderbilt. Coach Tim Corbin for Vanderbilt is trying to you know, stay in this game, but probably also using some of his relievers that might not pitch in a tight game. And right now, if you look at it, who's got the, the better end of the bullpen deal, you, you'd have to say maybe Vanderbilt because South Carolina now bringing in Ganey in the seventh of this game and closing out the ninth in the first game. Then obviously Chris Veach threw almost 60 pitches in the first game. They're probably both going to be down for tomorrow. But South Carolina does have a good bullpen. It's a, it's a deeper bullpen. So Mark Kingston just deciding to, if he gets the lead, going ahead and trying to win this series, bringing in his best. Two walks issued in this half inning to Nolan and Messina. The 3 1. That's headed towards the gap. And it's chased down in right center by Hewitt. Nolan tags and goes to third. A tremendous range. And Hewitt, let's take another look. Yeah, it was just a great jump, great piece of hitting. That's just, that's, that's big league play. That's a Really, really good range there from the center fielder, center fielder Hewitt. It's first and second, one down. Here's Ethan Petrie, excuse me, first and third. After Nolan tagged. Two home runs for Petri and a walk. We're going to take a look at them. Solo shot to left in the second. And he goes to right in the sixth. Goes to right again. And it drops in for a hit in front of Polk. Nolan scores an RBI single for Petri. Gamecocks take an eight to three lead. Well, I don't know what's more impressive, the home runs or this. I just love to see that. He, he just takes what the game gives him. He's selfless. That's just a great piece of hitting there by Petri. His third hit of the game. Third ribby of the game. Runners at the corners for Lee Croy. He attacks the first pitch to right center. It's the right fielder, Polk, who makes the play. Cena stays at third. 
two down. Man, up 8-3. I really thought he'd be going there. Cena's at third, Petri's at first. Maybe the first at bat of this game for Gavin Casas. And takes ball one. Casas was one for three with an RBI in game one of the doubleheader. Start at first and hit eighth. Causey got the start at first in game two. There goes Petri, and Casas gets hit. Seventh time that Casas has been hit in this season that's tied for the team lead with Petri and Lecroy. Bases are loaded for the Gamecocks. Ball one to Blake Jackson. Jackson's one for two. RBI double in the fifth, scored a run, was hit by a pitch in the sixth. That misses outside. in the transfer from Charlotte. 277 last season for the 49ers. Count evens at two and two. Messina leads off third, Petri off second, Casas off first. Jackson, Brewers on deck. Big strikeout for Kranzler, and the Gamecocks will leave the bases loaded, but they get another run, and we'll head to the people. He used to, he was our biggest fan back in high school days, and when we played with the Congaree and Casey. Teams in Legion ball, his dad, Wade Cleckley, was our pitching coach, and and I'll get to see former teammates of mine that they played on those teams uh, here tonight. It's gonna be really, really special night. Ruben's a wonderful young man. Pop up off the bat of Hewitt. Tippett takes care of it. One down. It sounds like a fun night, Kip. Yeah, it is. Ruben's a, a special kid. You know, they asked to, to not bring gifts and in lieu of that, to, to donate to the uh, Joy Program, which is a program that's uh, faith-based, is, is for uh, kids with and, and adults with special needs. Just an awesome, awesome opportunity to celebrate uh, a birthday for, for my good buddy, Reuben. Jonathan Vastine at the plate. He's one for three. Rounded out the second. Singled and scored a run in the fourth. Struck out his last time up. That was in the sixth. And 313, three homers and 19 runs batted in. He gets hit. We saw Casas get hit in the bottom of the seventh. Vastine gets hit in the top of the eighth. One out base runner for RJ Austin. 
Garrett Ganey pitching in both games this doubleheader. You ever do that, Kip? I don't know if I ever did that or not, uh, to be honest with you, Dave. Um, I'm really not sure. I think I may have closed a game out of a doubleheader and then started the next game. You know, but it wasn't an hour break in between. You know, it was just a it's like well, normal 20 or 30 minute break. It's as if it's just a long inning you're sitting out for. Right. So how difficult is it for a guy like Ganey? Only threw six pitches in game one of the doubleheader, one third of an inning, but pretty long break before coming back into this one. Yeah, it is a long break, but um, you know, you're starting to see it a little bit more in, in baseball and it's, it's not ideal. You don't want to make a habit of it, I don't think. But, um, you know, it just shows you the importance that Mark Kingston feels this game is for him. Obviously, you you go one and two in the first weekend of the SEC. You want to win the series. And he's certainly uh, do it, trying to do that with his best right now. Don't worry about tomorrow tomorrow, right? That's right. Going to the count on R.J. Austin. Vastine leads off first. The runner goes, no chance for Messina. That ends up in center field. And so Vastine will take third. And you see Messina say my bad there. That was definitely uh, not a smart play, not an easy pitch to throw on there. and Popped him up. Short right. Jackson makes the play. And that will keep Vastine at third. And that's a good play by Jackson. That is a really difficult play for the second baseman, Parker Nolan. And he did a good job. There's good pop-up priority there. That's in that little deep four hole spot and a long run for Jackson but he's got priority over the second baseman so he calls him off big second out South Carolina would like to keep this a five run lead I don't want to give Vanderbilt any momentum you know because it's not like it's the ninth right now it's still the eighth so I mean you know unless there's a lot of runs scored next inning the next half for South Carolina you're probably going to see Ganey go back out there One on the count on Davis Diaz. Diaz is 0 for 4, struck out in the first. He's grounded out three times, the third, the fourth, and the seventh. Still looking for his first hit of the series. He's called the ball, 2 and 1 the count. Two and two. Ground ball to third. Lee Croy. Side retired in the top of the eighth. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth from Fitchers used for Gamecocks. Combined in those innings. Owen won the can on Dylan Brewer. And he's been on base twice in this game. Single and scored a run in the fifth. Walked in the sixth. In the hole, 0 2. Brewer in his second season here at South Carolina after three seasons at Clemson. Brewer, uh, 
as Espinal holds on. It's 12 Gamecock batters this game that Vanderbilt has struck out, and Gamecocks have out hit the Commodores eight to seven. Also made two errors, but long ball has definitely been huge for the Gamecocks. Well, tip it's over three. Did have a hit in game one of this doubleheader. There is a defensive change, Kip, I just noticed for Vanderbilt. Humphrey is now in center field. There he is, number 10, Jacob Humphrey. Call strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Huseman. One, two, three, bottom of the eighth. First, he has to deal with Parker Nolan. Parker's 0 for 3 with a walk. He also had an RBI ground out. That was in the fifth. That's out of play. Going to the count on Nolan. Game three of the series will be at 1.30 tomorrow, right here on SEC Plus. Cox will be hoping to go for the sweep. Should they hold on in this one? Five run lead here in the bottom of the eighth. Well, it's been a hornet's nest so far, just as Coach Corbin predicted. Yeah, it has. I mean, South Carolina is. Uh, They've really pitched well today. Vanderbilt you know, coming in, hitting three, I think 26, you said, Dave, earlier. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a tall task, but they've done a very, very good job of limiting the damage when they have given up some runs and thrown strikes very, very well. Three and two the count now on Noland. Ball four, two out walk. Nolan walks for the second time in this game. Now it's a two out base runner for Cole Messina. He's done some damage against Coach Corbin's crew. Cole homered in the fifth. Walked in the seventh. Oh, I guess that was called a strike. Yeah, I thought he checked his swing. No, I think it was a called strike. It's definitely up. That gets away from Espinal, allowing Nolan to advance to second. It's a wild pitch. And a two out RBI opportunity now for Cole Messina. Oh, 
tack on an insurance run here in the bottom of the eighth. Two and one the count on the Gamecocks catcher. Two and Sue. That's tough. I mean, the same, you know, I think that's a pitcher's pitch as a strike, but if you're going to give the one that's below the knees right there and the one up at the shoulders, that's tough. Did he go? No. It's Mayhew Edwards. So the count is full. Cena with a team lead 24 runs batted in. Looking for another here. Nolan leads off second. The 3 2. Call strike three. Nolan reached via walk. There's one past Espinal. 0 for 2 in this game. Hit by a pitch. Walk. Scored a run. SEC Player of the Week in the hole 0-2. Hey, hey, Got him. Ganey strikes out Espinal. One down here in the top of the ninth, second strikeout for Garrett Ganey. That is just an explosive fastball there from Ganey. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, we, we talked about you know bringing in him to close out the first game, and then this game obviously coming in the seventh. But that game was on the line. I mean, it was obviously a, a, a tight game there. And you know, if there's one thing this does for sure, is this going to force some of these pitchers for South Carolina tomorrow? You know, South Carolina gets into the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth inning with a lead. It's going to force some of them to grow up a little bit quick. And, you know, I think that could bode well for South Carolina to get those guys some, you know, some, uh, some really important innings early on in the season. And it could really give them a lot of confidence if they could go out and get the job done. So, Colin Barcy pinch hitting. Gets him on three pitches, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Garrett Ganey. Well, Ganey is making himself some money. This young man looks excellent out there. Just love how loose his arm is and his delivery. He's got a little bit of a little herky-jerky to it, but I like it. He's very active. He just lets it eat. One to Troy Leneve. He's been on base four times. RBI double, single, and a couple of walks. Fifth year player from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Count on Leneve. That's grounded foul. One strike away. Crowd on its feet here at Founders Park. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the ninth. Ganey shuts the 
the door on Vanderbilt. He strikes out the side here in the top of the ninth.